guys, they're like these fucking uh, like frat dudes, whatever. They're, they're pointing over at us and they're laughing, right? And and I'm like, I go, Spag, are they fucking laughing at us? And he, he's like, you know, I think so. I don't, you know. So of course he's not as confrontational. So right. I walk over to the table and I go, Yo, what the fuck? I go, something funny to you? I go, you got a problem with my friend's shirt? And they go. What are you talking about? There was a table behind us. We're like calling out to him. Yeah. Well, they were behind us, and they were going. And then I felt like a dick. Yeah. So I go, let me buy you guys drinks. I'm so sorry, and I just was apologizing. And as we're walking away, Sebastian goes, "What the fuck's wrong with my shirt?" <laughs> Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to One on One with Christian Harloff. And this episode's pretty special to me. Um, I've mentioned it many times before on whether it's on carpool, things I've done, or uh, Schmo's shows, anything, is how I got involved with the comedy store. Um, a comedian, very funny comedian, Brett Ernst, who is now, if you have been watching Cobra Kai, you know him as Louis LaRusso from Cobra Kai. I've been friends with Brett for a long time. Brett's the guy that got me into the comedy store, so he's always been um, someone that I've kind of looked up to, someone who has been uh, in the comedy scene for a very long time. Has, he, the dude has some great stories, and we got real, man. We talked a lot about him kind of growing up and things that he went through in his childhood and kind of how it shaped him in, in general, um, you know, in, in whether it's with his comedy, whether it's him as a, as a human in general. He talked about kind of how he was when he was younger to when he was in his 20s and now in the last past five years to where he's been married and how that's kind of changed him and we talked about Cobra Kai we talked about when he worked on Wild Wild West with uh with, with Vince Vaughn um the the comedy tour so it's it's a great interview man it's, it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed talking to him so you guys should tune in listen make sure you rate comment do all that stuff and enjoy this interview with Brett Ernst. This episode of One on One is brought to you by Rode Microphones. Rode's proud to present My Rode Reel. It's the world's largest short film competition. This year, there's $1 million worth of prizes up for grabs. You make a three minute video, short film in any genre that you like, a behind the scenes video showing a Rode product being used and you could win big. Entries are open until July 31st. Head on over to myroadreel.com and get shooting. Myroadreel.com. Now go watch One on One or listen to it. Do something. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to One on One with Christian Harloff, and that's me. And look, today's guest is someone who not only has been a buddy of mine for a long time, has been in, now he's in one of my favorite shows of this year, and it was a really cool surprise to see him on the show, but then we got to reconnect because of it. The show is Cobra Kai. It's Brett Ernst. Cousin Louie is here himself. What's up, man? How you doing? What's up, buddy? Um, you know, we just kind of, it was, it was cool to, to obviously see you on this show, but then... You were back for you were here for movie talk, yeah, and we got to shoot the shit for a little bit, and then we hung out at Mitzi's thing for a little bit, which was yeah, cool. Yeah, that was really cool, man. That was my favorite because it kind of it, it it brought us back. It, I felt like it was two thousand three again. Well, what, what was I mean? I'll be honest with you. I, I, I was talking about this. I don't know if it was on another podcast or something, but um, that was the only time in my in my career that I was actually proud of myself for being a part of that right. family. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's true. You got. I mean, it will. Like I was just so overwhelmed because it, it, it's cool because you know at the store now I'm like one of the one of the veterans. Yeah. But <clears throat> that night we were all at the kitty table in the hallway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. And it was like different pockets of, ge of the yeah. generations, and, which was really cool. And and I've never in my career ever been. You know, I don't really care. But it was the only time when I, I was just knowing that I'm a part of that place yeah. in that moment of time. I was like, wow, I'm pretty proud that I was able to do that. Yeah, I was nervous. get in there. Well, I was nervous when I, when, you know, I heard it was going to happen because I haven't been back in so long, you know. So I was, when I, I pulled up to the store, I'm like, who am I going to see? Am I going to know anybody kind of here anymore? And the first thing, I, looked, I think I saw you, I saw Cap, I saw Renazisi, I saw Ari, all these people that I had come up with and hung out with. And, it, and it, it, you're right, it felt great. It felt like you, you see your name on the wall, so that badge of honor. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It, it, I don't know. It was weird. It would be yeah. like, it's the first realization I've had in 21 years that yeah. I actually accomplished something. Well, I mean, what, what do you say that though? Because you've been you're, you're a very successful comedian. You've been on the road. You got I mean, you got a good gig now too. You just do you? What is that? You, you kind of break your balls a little bit about? Do you wish you kind of had had a different? No, it's just I don't really. I don't know. It's not that I have a little opinion on myself or yeah. anything. I just don't. You're just oblivious to it. It's like work. Right. It becomes work. Is it, that, yeah, yeah. It's just a job, but it's like you know, it it really made me. 
it really, it just was, I shouldn't say proud of myself. I say it was, it was really cool yeah. to know you, that. Why wouldn't you be proud of yourself? That's a big, I, mean, I was proud of well, myself to get into the store. But it's because I moved, I moved out here yeah. for that. You know, to I mean, just be, to be, to be at the, the store. Store. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then um, to get that. But then it was really cool to, I, I, say, I shouldn't say I wasn't proud of myself. It, was, it made me really appreciate the accomplishment. Right. That's better. That's right. a better yeah, way yeah, to say yeah, it. Totally. Me it's too. always good to, to come out the gate complimenting yourself. No, but I mean that's but but I, I think that you're right. I think I, I felt that way when I went. To, it was and I hadn't done I haven't done stand up in like eight and ten years. And I and when I walked in, I said the same thing. I was like, yeah, I'm part of this shit. Yeah, you know? you're part, yeah we're part, yeah, part of the good. family. Names on the wall. It was good. Did you did you how did you feel about that night? When I mean in general, you think they? I thought they handled it pretty well. I yeah, it was, was great. I, I, the OR. Did you stick around for the OR part? No, of it? I had to leave. Dude, the OR was the best part of the. That's what I heard. I heard Holtzman just. Crushed Destroy it. Destroy everything. Brian Holtzman, for you guys who don't know, is this comedian that would never be able to get away with a lot of the stuff. That I mean, it was. It well, would, he never got away with it then. That's true. <laughs> that's why he's still. That's to true. me, um, and and I'm sure if, if you if you guys listen to podcasts, Rogan talks about him all the time. Marin, he's like a com he's a he's a comics comic. And yeah. He's pretty much a legend. Yeah. Um, he's one of the f if 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 you're a sensitive little bitch, don't go see him. Right. That's all I can say. But if you're an adult without any uh, that that can be. That can handle being in a room with other adults listening to adult stuff. He's then, the guy. Then you should go watch it. It was so refreshing to be there in that stage of the war because it like Twitter shut off. Like everything was done. Nobody was touchy about anything. It was just like there was no political correctness. It was just, dude, he just flew and he just did his thing and everybody was in awe. That place was in it was in it was in shambles by the end of the, because he was because he was just like a grenade he, went off. Well, because the thing with that guy is that he has no fear. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful thing to watch. It's it's like, it's like, uh, it's actually mentally off a little bit too. And it's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. He's, 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 I saw him fight. He fought a guy at Dublin. Do you remember that? Were you there that night? When he, was he jumped off the no, stage and fought I, a guy I on heard stage. About that. Yeah. It was, I was there that night. It was fucking crazy. But jumping back into that. So for people who, who don't know, uh, yeah. <laughs> he fought a guy, but he's like, um, he's just the rawest, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you gotta just, uh, you, you can't do it quite. He yells, he yeah. says shit that is just so vile sometimes. Yeah. It's hilarious. And, and, the, and the joke is that it is vile. Yeah. And you he's like, his, yeah. He, the, the guy's Jewish and he did that whole thing on Jewish people. Yeah. And if you, if you didn't know he was Jewish, you would have thought he was some alt right guy. Right, but he's not. <laughs> some racist, but well, he's not. Right. You can get away with his last name's Holtzman, so he gets away with it. <laughs> but he's nuts. No, he's nuts. And but he, I mean, he, he hits everything, he yeah. hits every angle on every cylinder. And he just really yells at people. It, 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 you know, it, that's why when you, you know you you're about to see something special as a comedian, when when all the comics run in when he's on. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's what you know who used to do that back in the day for us too, um, where he just disappeared off the face of the earth. Painter J James, James Painter, Painter was like, yeah. that way too. He's like, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Eh. Well, the problem with James was this: is that he would say this shit on stage and then get off stage and be in his head that nobody likes him. Yep. Absolutely, as where Holtzman doesn't give he a doesn't shit. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. And, and again, there's there's things that'll bring a comic in a room. One, if it's somebody famous right. that they haven't seen in a while, you'll run in. They'll run in. I don't really watch comedy. Yeah, but I watch. Holtzman. Most of us don't. Yeah, that's the thing is that you, I'll run in and watch. Holtzman. It's the it's the it's the the ones who kind of ha a comics comic. There are certain people that you would do that like. And I and back when we were, well, when I was coming up in like two thousand, I watched Brody. Brody, I would watch. I'd watch Sebastian. Um, well, it's it's well with those guys though. It's ed edge of the seat comedy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's 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 a whole different thing. It's like what the fuck is going to happen and what are they going to say? Right. And you know, it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's true. Um, so that was again for people out there who who don't know as far as how Brett and I go back. Brett and I, well, I started out in stand up comedy and like out in LA and like how did we meet I forget just gigs around town like 2000 like there was some I forget where the hell it was but we had done a couple different shows together and then you had you had kind of come up we were just kind of you know we found out we we're both East Coast kids and just, you know shooting the shit for a little bit and then um after a while I went to work for the WWE I came back and I started getting back into stand-up again and you had called me and you said listen I got um I, I, I've been a regular at the store for a little bit now. I have a couple recommendations at the comedy store. I wanna I wanna put you up. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> and it's like, and and you're like I'll put you up. And you did. You bombed. I did. I bombed. No. Threw shit at you. It's true. But I but I went up there and I. Oh uh, no! It's true. It's damn true. It's true. It's true. But I I went but I went and I became a regular at the comedy store and that was because of Brett's recommendation. I got in there and um and you know we just been we've been tight for 
it's like 15 years now, which is nuts. Yeah, and man. Dublin's. We used to do Dublin's together. Yeah. That's, that's what it was. But I want to talk. I, there's some shit, though, too. You don't really, when you, you know, you do, this is where we learn, get to know about each other now is on podcasts. But you are, you grew up in Miami? Uh, I, I moved around a lot. But Jersey I consider first, South, right? Yeah. I was born in Jersey. I was always back and forth. I consider South Florida my home, though. You, okay. But yeah. you, how long do but you But I, 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 I mean, I, I love New Jersey. I, I was a kid right. there. And I, my, I moved down my freshman year of high school. Oh, oh shit. So Jersey to, Jersey to South Florida. You were in Jersey all the way through high school, though? No, I was in South Florida through high school. Okay. Through high school. Okay. So I was in Jersey 6th, 7th, and 8th. Okay. And then I was born there, moved, moved back. Because I was in middle elementary school for a few minutes in Florida, yeah, uh, for a while, then moved back up there. Yeah, then You're I was all over the place. How yeah, did, fifteen did, different schools. So one high shit. school. So how did that? How did that happen? Was it just your, were your parents moving around a lot? And my mom, single mom shit. Oh, single mom stuff. So, yeah. all right. So single mom, and then you. So your mom was different jobs and stuff too. Is that she? So she was raised. No, nah, she. You know, my, there was some problems with my 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 real father, and okay. then we moved, and then my grandparents were in Florida. So we moved down there to be closer to them. Okay. And then my mom remarried again. And then we moved back up to Jersey. And then then we moved back down again. Okay. Were you were you tight with your dad at all? Or you didn't really have a relationship with him? My real father? Your real father. Um, I mean, I mean, no. I mean, I, yeah. I, the last time I really... Uh, they got divorced when I was six. I think the last time I saw him, I was seven or eight. That was and the last time you saw him? Died, oh, wow. He died when I was 10. Oh, shit. 10 or 11. Okay. And you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to do it. I don't mind. It's in the special. No, but what, <laughs> I, what, what, hap what happened? How did, he, how did he pass? He killed himself. I didn't know that. Yeah. Committed shit. suicide. Oh, wow. So, okay. That, I mean, shit, man. So that, like, has a... Because I had Freddie Prince Jr. in here. We were talking for a bit, you know? And that's like... So, so did you... Have you ever met Freddie? Have you talked to... Like, no. Because he, you know... His father, you know... Was legend. Sad. He was, like, 19 or 20 when he Yeah, he was young. He was in his early 20s. But that we were, when we talked about it, too, I mean, that'll... That 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 shapes you, man. That I mean, you got to as how you got to deal with that. How yeah, there was a lot it? before that too. That that went down. Like what? Can you, well, he got in some trouble, and yeah. then um, you know, he just it just shit fell apart. Yeah, and, and so and that's a lot for your mom to deal. With. And you got what? You had two brothers, right? Yeah, an older uh, older brother and younger brother. Okay, so then. She's my older brother was the was more like my like he you know he stepped in okay. but he was just a kid yeah and my mom was always working and shit so my older brother kind of held it down right so he had yeah. so you're so, so shit man so you can so you have two brothers then and now your older brother is the one who's really kind of looking after you while your mom's working and trying to get you guys right, fed right, and right, stuff right and you know my brother was always helping my mom out and right. Then, you know, me and my little brother. I always said my, my, my brother was more like a father figure to me, and my little brother is my best friend. Right, and that makes sense. So, and, and you could tell that because I knew your I knew your brother from the comedy store too. And you could tell yeah. you guys we were, were always tight. When you move around a lot, yeah, you become each other's best friends. Sure. But I was very protective of him. Right, which is why I was always in, I got in a lot of fights. See, look, when you're a kid and you move around that much, it's inevitable you're gonna have to fight a lot. It's fights, and I also think there's probably a lot of the, there's probably a lot of anger. In, in you at that point, there's probably a lot of stuff in there that it's like, you know, it's, it's shit. Please, Dr. Phil. That's true, though. <laughs> am I wrong? But am I wrong? No, you're right. I mean, you, you know, there is this, uh, there, there is this, uh, uh, this, this, you know, you, you, you know, there's a lot behind it. And it's tough when you're a little boy and for any, I mean, for anybody, really. But when you're a son and when you're a young kid and, and you don't have that security, right. cause you, it's not like. My buddy, here's the difference. When you're raised by a single father or a single mother, it's a little different. Yeah. And this is the best analogy I can make. And this is coming from people that I know that were raised by single fathers. When you have a single mother, you know, if there's a problem, you're going to know. Right. The whole neighborhood's going to know. Right. The family's going to know. Right. They're crying. How are we going to pay the bills? I'm right. scared. There's a lot of emotion in that. When you're raised by a single father, nothing's ever really mentioned. But when you're raised by a mom, I'll come home, there's food on the table, the, you know, they're more... Yeah. And the father would have a note like, hey, uh, there's a steak in the freezer, defrost it. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'm right. out of town for a month. Deal with it. Yeah. Right, right. So, so there's pluses and negatives to both. Sure. Um, when you're a young boy with a single mom and you, you, you tend to want to take care and protect. Right, of everybody, of your siblings, of your mother. Yeah, and yeah, so. But uh, but it's even more for for your mom because right. you, 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 the the whole dynamic of just being a kid is done. Right, and then especially if you're living yeah. in areas where you got to worry. Yeah, like I remember being a kid, I'd follow my mom to the laundromat and carry a bat. You yeah, know? and then me and my little brother used to have 
if somebody broke in, I'd have a weapon here. You know, you and we're only like I'm only people like, breaking into your house. Well, you no, I'm saying you you you're, you're nervous you and it, it right, right, right. You know what I mean? Right. And then I remember uh, I was working at six, seven. I would try and get jobs, but then that's when I really started stealing. And then, um, but I would I would kick up to my mom. You know, we we we, we had this place. This guy I remember I went in and I said the guy needed a job. I was like seven. Yeah. Or eight maybe. I was seven. And I, I could just imagine now being, if somebody, if a seven-year-old said, hey, I need a job. I need a gig, right? right. You know, go <laughs> like, watch like, a fucking cartoon. Okay, okay, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, that would have been, you know, you'd been like, well, how stressed out are you? Right. And me and my little brother would crush boxes. He gave us a dollar and uh, a bag of potato chips and a soda. Like day. working at a deli or something? That was a gas station. A gas station. Okay, yeah. So. I, and I wish I knew his name. If I, I wish, I mean, I'm sure he's probably 80-something now. Right. But when we were little kids, he was an older guy. Yeah, so you grew up fast. Yeah. Yeah, man. You grew up fast. So that's why, again... Well, that's I, how life works, man. Yeah. It just It just comes at you. Well, because I can tell... I mean, that's the thing with you, too, is that you're one of the funniest dudes that I know, but it's like there's also... there's there's. I think that you had to have a pain as a fucking comedian to really make the shit work, and there's like... And I've seen you get angry. I've seen you get <laughs> passionate. I've seen... I think that there's... But you got to control that <laughs> but shit, But that's though. also being Italian. Well, it half is. Italian yeah, half Italian and German. Well, yeah, well, that's what it is. So is that what you are? You're half Italian, half German? Yeah. Yeah. So Mostly it, Italian. I'm Sicilian... Uh, right. Or Nobly Don and German. And I think I got a little uh, British in me. And, okay. And I'm Native. I did the 23 in uh, the Ancestry. Oh, did you really? Yeah. So, so who mostly was, Italian. Who's mostly Italian? Was it your mom or my your mom. pop? My mom. My mom's 100%. Okay. okay. And then my dad was British, I mean, uh, German, English, and Native American. Okay. Well, geez. I, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know that. I think I, I think he told me that before. But uh, you, so. But you know, yeah, you do. You get you get a little, uh, you know, here, here's the thing that happens when you're 10, yeah. say. And you're working. Well, you you're hustling. Yeah. And you're in your mind, and, and this is this is why you see a lot of kids high risk, especially young boys without fathers. They they get into a lot of trouble. Yeah. You know, there's. What that, were you stealing? You said you were stealing. What were you stealing? I before? would steal it. Like, we were always running little 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 scams. Scams and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I to, there's one I talk about in my act at my, on my special, which you can see for free at brettcomedy.com. Yeah. Um, Brett with one T. Um. <laughs> Where we dressed up as Boy Scouts and collected money. And, oh, okay. Like so we were always doing little, little, little. Me and my little brother were always hustling. Right. You you, you know? weren't doing like Tyson stuff like in Brooklyn, like grabbing purses and shit, right? Well, no. My, I always say, you know, all the trouble I got in, all the time I've been arrested, whatever. Yeah. If if you were reading my charges, you wouldn't be like. Right. You'd be like. <laughs> You did that? You're pulling scams. You're like yeah, doing yeah. Zach Morris shit. That's stuff you should have gotten arrested <laughs> for. Yeah. Um, no, which was. But, but I was saying is that when, when you're that young um, and you don't, I mean, I, and I, the good thing is like my godfather was, was like my father to me and, and I had a stepfather later on. Yeah, I, was, I was a little older then, but you know. Yeah. You got along with him pretty well? Yeah, I love that guy. Good. And then um, uh, and my grandfather, I mean, there were these role models, but it wasn't consistent. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Your mother and your brothers that were there like every, every day. Every day. Right. And then I would, um, but you know, getting back to the point I'm dragging on. Sure. Is that if, if you're, when you create in your mind what you think a man should be at 10. Mm -hmm. and, then you, and you really got to think about that. Like when I'm a 10 year old kid, first of all, I used to think NFL players' shoulders were, were really that big. <laughs> right, I right. remember thinking I can never play football. Or I hope my shoulders grow. Right. That's the type of mind that you're, you're creating this with. And you're like, he's got to be able to fight. He's got to be good in sports. You know, he's got to sleep with a lot of women. You know, stupid shit. Right. You start to put together your you, own yeah, version Yeah, what you of think. It. And it's right. just really what you see. Right. And you don't have anybody necessarily there. Like, like you said, your dad's not Well, you not don't know. To... You got to figure it out. Right. Well, and, then, and then when you get about 30 or tw even 25 to 30, you start to realize that's not what any of that shit's about. Right. Then you spend like the next five to ten years trying to break all these bad habits you created for yourself sure yeah i mean that was the thing so you when did because you could have again whether you're the scams are and the, and the stealing is is not it's dangerous not or say but yeah but but still you're still doing stuff to where whatever you might be doing you're figuring out that it's not it's not it's not what you should be doing right it's it's, it's not it's it's getting yourself I think in it was trouble. wrong man you, you you didn't you still don't or you didn't no, I, I mean then i didn't think it was wrong i just right. thought well, it was a it was a hustle but you need to get yourself out of that at some point because then otherwise you can you can go down a pretty dark path yeah but i, I think that also has to do with um you know it, I, I still remember being a kid and uh, you know the story i tell when my buddy stole the ambulance uh -huh. um we we uh, you, there's still a sense of intelligence and, and character and decency in you yeah. that won't allow you to go that far. Right. 
You right. Know? Well, that's not for everybody. Even when I was a kid, like I remember one time, uh, these guys were, were were being rough with this one kid, and, mm. and I remember stepping up, being like, "Yo, leave, back off, man. Right. leave the guy alone." You know what I mean? You weren't like, a, I, I you weren't a bully. No, not at all. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Right. Not even close, man. Right. You were the guy. But, that was but kind none. Of there was no real bullies like you see in the movies, though. There was just a lot of tough kids. There were no bullies at all in your school. There were just. It, it, you just got. But there people Everybody who are, picked on each other. Like right. it, it wouldn't be like you know you're gonna get tested. Right. You know, and most kids had most kids were tough kids. Right. But then you know sometimes like it could be five or six on one. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you gotta be like, yo, man, you know what are you doing? Right. Like, know, leave, leave that kid alone. Right. Yeah. That type of thing. So, but at what point? But I you, got in a lot of trouble. I was always acting out. Right. So, and but that that's kind of where I was going with it. Like, how do you get yourself like out of it at one point? Where do you say you lie? You lie? Like, to get out of trouble? No, what not. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get yourself out of, whether oh. it's South Florida or, or Jersey or whatever it is, to say to yourself, at what point do you know? Because you played football. Yeah. You played football. Did you, did you think, is that something that you wanted to do or is it just something that? It just was something that I, I yeah, of course. I thought, yeah. you know, it was all I ever wanted to be. It was football. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it was just something that I did. Yeah. You know, I, I used to love it. I got attention from it as a kid. And is that, do you think that added into... Because look, this is why we, why I do this, why we do stand up. We do, we do it for the attention as well too, and, and, and it's part of it. And is that did that did that blend into it? Is Man, I feel like I'm disagreeing with everything you're saying. How do you I, I do that? Because it's not about the. It wasn't about the attention. You just said to you for the, when I was a child, attention. but not for the stand up. It still adds in there. That's bullshit. That's no, it's not. Dude, it's bullshit. I'm not telling you that you don't craft a joke and you're not out there for the no, performance of it. No, this is good. I like all. this. Go ahead. But it's true, though. You're out there for the performance of it. You, I mean, you're there to, to craft your to craft. If the it material. was about attention, then I, then then you, then it, people would find a thousand different ways to get attention, I other than just getting on getting uh, online for three minutes and standing and, and doing what we do for six fucking years. I'm driving a goddamn, I'm delivering pizzas at 30. Right. Why? So somebody could be like, look at him? That's not what I'm saying. I'm not telling you that it's, that's the only reason you do it, but it's certainly part of the entire package of why you, you you're telling me that you don't go up there to be, like, when you get off the set and someone comes up to you and goes, dude, that roller dude, skate bit you crushed. Don't, you don't, honestly, buddy, you really don't, man, you, you, you really don't, <laughs> I'm fucking, that's, I'm just the opposite. You never, so you never cared if anybody. Never, if you never cared to anyone, if, if someone said to you that your favorite, Joe crushed. I swear to God on my life, man, it's not where I go with that. I was talking about as a kid. There, yeah. was, there was coaches there. Sure. So when I was with the coaches, it was almost like you had a, a male, male guy talking to right. me. You know what I mean? And, and they would guide me a little. And, and then I remember one time. This is kind of fucked up, but I heard Greg Lloyd tell this in in, in an interview one time. That. Uh, there was some dude on the team whose whose father was there, mm -hmm. and his father wasn't there, and I and I did almost the same exact thing, that all these dads were there watching their kid, and the kid was fucking sorry, you know he wasn't that good, right. and then I just fucking laid this kid out one time, but I on, extra, on extra hard just because my dad wasn't there, right? You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. So there was a lot of that male. That was I'm talking about the attention from the the men. It wasn't like accolades. You didn't care as much about accolades. It was different. Yeah, because I, I was good, but I wasn't that great. Right. I, but by the way, the way I was started saying, I could see why you thought that. Is it more respect? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, respect, is, is, more an, respect. Is, is another is another good way. Because good way attention for. can be consumed. You know, like again, I still. I mean, we can argue about it for the remainder of the show. I think that any any time anyone puts themselves anywhere, whether it's acting or stand up, I don't care what Daniel Day Lewis says. Like as much as he loves to put in the performances and do well, anything why, why would you by the way why yeah. would you discount that like if i said to you that i enjoyed the sport of football yeah. because i like the physicality of it and the camaraderie of, of, of the team i would believe you 100 percent. okay but, but i would then, say but that then yeah. if, the, if if tom brady was saying i need to win and this yeah. is the way i need to do this and if i lose and i like the fact that i need to compete and that would be just as true as the, the same excuse that, that, that I would give for playing the game. I, and I agree with all of that. What I'm saying is I think that there's also a part of it, a, per, a person's psyche, for any time they put themselves in front of a camera, performance, anything, that there is that need and want of, of people, of, of having people see you succeed you want, and do you what you're doing. You want acknowledgement in a sense. Saying. What I'm saying, like, you know, like after this, I'll say, how did I do? Right. But, it's, but you're not here to be like, the, that's not what what's driving you to. I mean, dude. To no, be honest, I didn't with you, say driving. I was wait. I was with you when you started this shit. Yeah. To where it's fucking at now. <clears throat> this is this goes a whole. I know it's not the main reason, but this is a whole other 
you don't you don't build this just because you you want attention. You no. got you got the attention already. Of course, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, but it's in there. Like, I, it's, but you it's, do want the acknowledgement. Like, that's what I mean. It's part you know of the I mean? package. Yeah, that's but like, yeah. but the, but you do know there's a difference. Like, strippers want attention. Well, you know, I don't know the way through. Look, like, here's the thing. So if I if at the end of this show. At the end of the acknowledgement of it, at the end of the you show, you could run it. with that strippers. <laughs> I think too, though. But like, but by the end of the, I don't even know that. But I don't even the, care. But at the end of this, if people say like that was a fucking deep conversation you guys got through. What a great show! I didn't know um, Brett as uh, before. Before I knew him as cousin Louie, but now I know him as this this guy. I want to go check out his stuff, and we had this whole conversation. I like about to it. create. I, I do like a self of accomplishment. Right. Okay, but so there's also bad. like to me, stand up is is more like golf. Where I'm not, comp I'm competing against myself. Yeah. So I'm trying to be better at what I do. I, I don't want to sound arrogant in a sense, but if you know you're good at something, you shouldn't be impressed when you do well. That's fair. Does that make any sense? 100%. That, that's like when, whenever you see, when, when, you know, Jerry Rice isn't impressed every time he scores a touchdown. Right. Because it's not about that. It's there, also there, part of the job at this point. That's my point. Yeah. But when you first start, um, it was more, well, I mean, the, the, all right, because I moved around so much, mm -hmm. I could say I made friends through humor. Yeah. So maybe you could say, yeah, I'm getting attention from kids, and kids want to be my friend. But yeah. that was more like I can't. I I I just would always make. Why am I doing this? Is this the Is this the yeah, yeah. Um I just uh, uh, I, I would make jokes a lot, to, so people would right. so become friends. That's how I made just friends. Validated my point. But uh, but I'm saying it's it's not more. It's not like you're driving. I didn't say it was your driving force. Well, you know maybe why. Uh, and if I if people don't know by now, I overanalyze everything. And I love that. Um, it's great. It's, for, it's good it, possible it, podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe the reason why I said that is because I know the comics that want attention. Yeah. And there's a different. Now that's the yeah, thing. There's a yeah. different version of. There's people who just get up there just for people to look at them and say like. Yeah, that's not, that's the way I originally took it. But no, I guess if you break it down and different I'm, levels, I'm and saying, yeah, of course. Dude, I'm saying that's a fucking piece. Like uh, you're. If you see this guy's comedy, you can tell he's not just up there so people to stare at him. He's in there to to craft the joke, to make sure the bits happen, to you know, to really tell to entertain people. But that's because it's also part of the job. Yeah, yeah, and no, this is this a is a this is a parking lot conversation right now. It is. Yeah, because now that I'm thinking, I'm like, God, I could have saved us ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had, we used to but I just like the attention of, of arguing. I know and talking. I look and that because yeah, basically you're we right. We just talked it through. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I, I took offense, not offense to that. I I was taken back by that because yeah. automatically, I picture in my head. The kind of people that the, the we know. The kind of people that I we know. know. And then I I'm understand. like, come on, man. Yes, yeah, not you. But then I originally said it, even if it's attention from a coach, it's yeah, it's still yeah. it's still attention. And that's what I'm saying. Like for for yeah. I mean, I'm not or interaction, whatever it might be. And that yeah. that's kind of what it, like. You, and you brought the best part of that whole thing was what you said. Like, so it kind of brings me back to you're growing up. You meet these kids and you realize. You just know that when you have a rhythm that where you're na either naturally funny or you're not, you have that we, thing or you don't. I forgot what comic said. Rich Voss told yeah. me told me the quote, but it, it was a, it was a it was a black comedian that told him this. I don't remember who, but um, a, there's a, there's comics that are that they're back of the bus funny. Okay. And you know those are dudes that are making dudes that don't you know that don't uh, don't, don't usually laugh. Like Holtzman. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah or Joe Diaz is a good back of the bus funny guy. Right. You know, right. guys that are in the back just telling stories, cutting it up, you know. Uh, uh, and yeah. and then there's guys that, like, uh, write, say funny things, they mm -hmm. say. Yeah. You know, like, that write jokes. And and I, I love all of it, right. you know. But you were kind of back of the bus funny guy at, in, in I, Miami. I don't really consider myself, a, uh, I mean, I write, but I'm not, like, a writer. I'm more, I just write on stage. Yeah. You know what I mean, and then I keep through through repetition. Yeah, you know what hit you. You try to think that now. You analyze how the yeah. crowd reacted to it. You're the same way. Yeah, I remember when you and I used to talk about it at the at, in the in the lot, the comedy show. We'd yeah. be like, that thing hit. That thing didn't. Oh, I'm gonna work on that. I, I was surprised that that worked. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go, and then you try it again the next night, and yeah. you and you craft and you move move over it. That's I never once write anything down. That's no. the crazy part. Well, you're terrible on computers and technology too. I fucking it's you're part really of the reason why I'm 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 a Wednesday through Sunday act yeah. and not a fucking weekend, <laughs> not a Friday and Saturday <laughs> special engagement. You could have you wrote half the shit down. You'd be I mean <laughs> Rogan actually said the thing too. I was not too long ago on his show how how, <laughs> how many ideas that he had lost because he just written something down and back. Pocket. Well, it's not even that. Even if I put it in my phone, yeah. I don't even read them. Right. You know what I mean? I get overwhelmed. Right. 
Um, it took but, you ten minutes to try to take a picture of the Thor hammer. I can only imagine. Yeah, dude, it's yeah. it's just not my thing, right. man. But even when I write, you know, at home when I'm writing scripts or whatever I'm doing, um, there's a whole method for it for me. Yeah. I, I gotta I gotta be distracted, listening to music, and then I just. Yeah. You got ADD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have that. Um, I had OCD. Okay. Oh, how the fuck did you, oh, did you really? Well, there's different forms. There's yeah. uh, uh, there's you know the over. Um, Organized one, yeah. but then then they're the people that obsess on things and and you know overanalyze. That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Or or like go, um, oh my god, did did I hurt this person's feelings? And da 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 da. Right. And then you just get yourself in this fucking rabbit hole. No, I know. Where you think that yeah. that you that this person's gonna jump off a a building because I I, I hurt their feelings. Yeah, no, you could not, create that thing. Yeah, and you and I have had conversations. I remember being on the phone with this is. We, you were, I think we were on the phone once. Once particular scenario, I think we were on the phone for like two hours, and it was just because the same thing. We, that sounds about right. Yeah. Was, well, you could see where a, a ten minute, ten, well, that, one that, point can go ten minutes. But to that was it. And, well, because and I think it ended very similar to the way that this one did. It was just like wait, 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 wait. And, it, and it started up here, and then it ended like, oh, that makes sense. You, you, you made your point. Made your well, point. look, the, some of the things that make a person a good writer yeah. or a good comic don't necessarily translate well in conversation yeah. unless it's with another writer or a comic. Right, because they can really... Because well, then you could the follow same, the thoughts. And, and, same and, brain. And we've, been, we've fought the same wars. So we mm -hmm. know we can, like, even if, if initial points start... Like, if you had that same conversation that I just did and I brought up, like, some... some you go and you get yourself some fucking what, frozen yogurt or whatever you did, and some guy says to you, you just do stand-up because of the attention. If you don't hit him in the face with the yogurt first, you're gonna you're not gonna end the conversation the same way we did because he hasn't gone through it. He right. hasn't been he hasn't been through it. So and I, I think that's that's what a lot of people still don't realize. Like when people talk about stand up comedy, I'm very protective over comedians in general, even though I haven't done it in ten years. You know, it's still it's it's part of. It's been that long. It's about ten years, give or take. It's like it's but I was but well, I. That's what happens when you're in, to, in, in for, for the attention. <laughs> that you just fail because yeah, you, you don't you find you a new way to do it. You got new attention. I got a new way to find. Yeah, I, I, I perform in front of more people now than I did in a, at the comedy store. So I can <laughs> I don't need you anymore. I need you. I need all of you. I need help. Um, but, trying to buy a home in my house. Yeah. I'm trying to buy a home. Yeah, what's what's going on with that? You said you told me before. You, you think about moving? You no, 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 I'm, just, I'm just playing playing just, with the idea. You're but, messing around. But um, what were we just talking about? You don't want to talk about that. No, I don't mind. Oh, okay. I, I just like I like I like this. Uh, okay. What were we saying though? Oh, oh, but sometimes when you get around like civilians, so yeah, to speak, like right. people that that don't get it, that don't go off the on these fucking tangents. And yeah. and, and, and and the funny thing is, is that. We we tend to give creative people this this um, uh, stamp of being a brilliant just because they're creative. Like mm -hmm. just because you're creative doesn't mean you're you're smart or intelligent. Right. It just means you're creative. Right. And there's a lot of traits that we attribute to artists as being like this guy's a you know genius or whatever, but in reality it's it's He's just more creative than someone else. It's just something off. Right. You no. know, like like there's 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 you know again it, it's just. We're we're our own breed, so yeah. to speak, our own thing, yeah. and, and and people tend to to put artists as up here, but which you know any anybody should be up here, right? But when when well, it's the entertainment thing, man. It's, you know, back we just we just associate a lot of brilliance to people that can write music and, yeah. and can write jokes. Sure. Well, I, I take that out of the comedy. I think that's anything though, too. It's a it? form of intelligence, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that like. It doesn't mean you're any you ever, more superior than anyone. Like else. you ever hear when people are like that guy's brilliant. You know, yeah. people who can't with bad handwriting and curse a lot, they're right. brilliant. But but, but here, the guy that's organized is a, is a dummy. Well, but here's a pushback on that just a little bit. Like Dave Chappelle is brilliant. Right. Like and so in I think that it just depends. It's it's in your field where you can say that too. Like there's people here that do certain things. There's like Thad Williams uh, who who was like runs production right and like to watch his brain. Him and Dennis, who watch their brains kind of do stuff here, like they're brilliant at production. Like they really are. Yeah, they're good. everybody's good at, at something. Right, and like everybody knows what they know. What they know, and, and some people know it better than. than but I'm saying, people. if a guy's a, a mechanic, and th that doesn't mean that like the artist that's that's fucking all over the place is, is a mess is smarter than the mechanic. Right, right. I mean, he's he's smarter at the mechanic than in stand-up comedy. Like Chappelle's yeah. better at the mechanic, but then the mechanic is brilliant at fixing yeah. the fucking. Th I, I but I'm saying that they tend to attribute these types of qualities with artists a lot. Right, I understand what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. Meanwhile, a lot of these people are fucking 
drugged up and, and just cha- like uh, the, I love the line the Joker says I couldn't relate I, I loved it when he, I'm Dark like Knight. a dog chasing a car yeah, right, right, what right. am I going to do when I catch it right. and, and there's this restlessness that, our, that people that are in our business have yeah. and you know a lot of them self medicate and there's these random thoughts that keep you up all night and right. the people that get I mean the depression it can hit you hard yeah you know well especially in, in, in stand up I mean stand up there's because that's that's another reason why I think going back to our, our conversation before too is that for that three minutes, ten minutes, hour, you're you're in your own thoughts, you're able to do your own thing, and you can and it, it's the exception, it's the being accepted by the audience that you know you can you'll be able to kind of level how your work's going that day. That's mm-hmm. they're your barometer as far as like you know even it's instantly you know if you did well. You know what you're doing. You know you, you, you it's just a rhythm within seconds of like that's the vibe of what we're doing here. You start off okay, that's the kind of set I'm going to have, but after that hour, let's say an hour is gone, then it could be well like you said very similar to what we're talking about with the Joker. I just caught the car. What's next? Mm-hmm. Well, I got to wait until the next fucking set the next night, or I got to wait until the next weekend. And people don't realize that that for a comedian could is is like devastating. I got to back. I got to get on stage. I got to get. Back. It, it it when they, people don't realize it when they say it's like a drug, it it is it is. But it's also, it, yeah. And, yeah. But like for me, I'm not it, it because I'm hyperactive and, and like when I played football, I could focus because there was all this shit going on. Right. When I'm on stage, I'm I'm, I'm zeroed in. Sure. You know what I mean? Like yeah. right now, I don't feel centered, right. even though we're having this conversation. Like I feel off a little. That's why I feel like I'm I'm a step behind you. Okay. I don't know why, uh, but sometimes that happens. But when when I'm in it, if like you know, if I'm in a in, in a situation where I gotta I gotta perform, yeah, then I, I can I can get I, it feels, it's almost like you get heightened. Yeah, and it's been your life for like 23 years. Like 21, yeah, 21, 21 years, yeah, nonstop. Yeah. Right. So and you do, but oh, but it, it yeah. also could be a drug. Oh, what was I gonna say too? Like, I noticed that people like I I had I had di- depression and and yeah. um uh, I had a bunch of shit. And I know, I know whether when, it, when it's real or not. Um, I, I caught depression like a week ago. I just beat it. <laughs> no, but when did you really? When we took some. I took. Uh, co- <laughs> what do you got? Yeah, I my got grandmother depression. told me you, you got you to gotta, you gotta crush the garlic up, make a nice. Uh, I got warts. What do you got? That, depression. Uh, I got depression. <laughs> I caught it. So what? But, but but I mean, when did you? When I was when diagnosed you, with that shit, man. When? And then, uh, well, I, I never went to a shrink. And then, okay. I mean, I went after my brother died, my older brother. Right. And then I went, and then, because um, I had to talk to somebody. Right. And then it's so funny how even talking to them, it wasn't so much, here I go with the hands, it wasn't so much the advice that, that they gave me, it was hearing myself talk. Mm-hmm. It's like, I sometimes I talk and I figure it out while I'm talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it, it, it's in your head You're, for a bit, that when yeah. you actually hear it, though, it's, it's that more powerful. Yeah, you can analyze yeah. it more. So, uh, you know, um, but here's, here's my own observation. Because I, I know comics that have anxiety, and are the OCD that's organized, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's the comics with the depression mm-hmm. and the OCD that revolves around like, God forbid something happens. Yeah. Right. And then you have the um, uh, the ADHD, the hyperactivity, which is like you can go up and then down mm-hmm. and whatever. But I noticed that people with depression and that type of OCD, which would be mine, tend to live in the past. Yeah. And the people with the anxiety they they live in the future. They're they're worried about what can What's happen. What's gonna happen next? And we don't worry. Tomorrow. I don't worry about anything. Okay. I just sometimes like you know I just should have done that. Should have done this. Well, it's more like you start missing people and you just you're always sad. You're always like yeah. fuck, man. Right. Why you know it's like you get sentimental. Where does that come from? Do you think? What is that? I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, it's got to do something with the you know. I think if you experience some tragic shit at a young age. Yeah. Because, oh, the other OCD I had is I used to associate, and I guess this is with um, superstitious people, mm-hmm. but, like, if, if I do this, yeah. you know, something good will happen, or, okay. you know, like, you start doing these things that, which I don't do anymore, because I, I broke my patterns, I recognized the patterns. Did you see somebody or something? You just did it at, at first, and then I just read up on it. Okay. And basically what that means is that because, like, something bad happened to you, yeah. or something you need to feel that you're in control... So if I do something like this, yeah. right? It would if I can do this, that means that you know we're gonna get a hundred views or whatever. Like sure. you, you, you associate that, yeah. and then like okay, if 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 on eleven eleven happens, then if if I was thinking this on eleven eleven, then this can come. So what what you're trying to do, which is all it's all asinine, 
Right. It, it can it can actually be beneficial, but it can also be detrimental. Beneficial and probably helping you think about like jokes and stuff, right? Well, as I far meant, as like the process, I'm saying well, it, more like, yeah. I mean, it, it, how do I say it? Like, all right, here's a way it could be beneficial. Mm -hmm. When I ran track and I, I was fast as a kid, because when I lived in the apartment building, if I if I opened the door and I ran up the stairs before the door closed, yeah, my mom would be safe. Okay. All right. I so that, I associated with that. Okay. But because I was running up the stairs, I was able to get out of the blocks quicker. Right. right. So I, I was okay. faster because of that. So you're giving yourself goals, but maybe yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. like fucking. Right. You know what I mean? It can drive you fucking nuts. I can imagine. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. you could. You, you know. Again, I didn't realize I was doing it, right. and then you know, Italians we tend to be superstitious, anyways. You know, I do this sometimes if I'm talking about something because yeah. you don't want the malaria. Right, right. You know. Right. Right. Um. But a lot of that has to do with trying it, trying to control things that you knew, like when you were young, you were out of control with. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I think that goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of, of the show with you. And it's like, it's you got to deal with it. You figure out a way to, you know, you because if you ignore it, it gets it, it can get it be a real pain in the fucking ball. So you, don't well, know you can't there. let it spiral. Like I, I know people very close to yeah. me that really convince themselves that they have diseases and. Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, I remember one time I, I thought I was going to die when I was like 19. Okay. Why? Like why? I was giving shit away to my friends. Thought you were going to die just because? I just convinced myself. Right. Like you get hit by a car or something was going to happen? Or? Yeah. Well, yeah. no, it was like something, I just felt something was going to happen. Yeah. Right. And, and then you, you just, cre it's like, it's fucking insane. Yeah. But a lot of it was because I had no direction. I had nowhere to go. I always felt like a loser. Right. You know, because I, I was like, I had nothing, I had nothing going on. Did you have a girlfriend like back then? Because you I didn't have my first girlfriend. I mean, I didn't have my first girlfriend until yeah. I was twenty-five. Why is that? I don't know. I just didn't want to date. Just randomly hung out with women. Okay, so you just you just kind of like you said before, you just kind of moving around doing your thing. Yeah, man. I was right. always unsettled. Okay, and then you, at, at some point when you're twenty-five, you just say you're just gonna commit and do do your thing. Well, man. It, I, yeah, I mean, I always I always was um, I always had to I always felt unsettled. Yeah, I can't, I can't explain it. I mean, I'm more grounded now, but right. well, there, was, there was always something going on that yeah. was of an adult nature in my life that I, I never was able to just chill and relax and, you know, and you always something. And you discover that at 25, 30, and then, because you're married now. Yeah. Right? How long have you been married? Uh, five years in September. she in the business? Technically. Yeah, I mean, she, you know, she, she does, uh, she models, but she, okay. she's done with that. Yeah. She's been doing it since she was a kid. Okay. But we... Um, How'd you guys meet? Uh, in Ohio, in Chicago. Oh, which, did she come to a show? No, I walked in a restaurant. She was there. See, that's that's good. That's good. Cause yeah. I mean, although I met my wife at a show, so it's, you know, I'm like, that's good. Don't meet the ones at the show, even though I married my <laughs> wife at, from, from <laughs> Is the that show. why you're saying it? No, but, um, but that's, that's good to know, too. I think that sometimes, again, I mean, being... But she's from Chicago? She's from Ohio. Oh, so, okay. So she moved... But she moved here... She moved here with you. Yeah, but she okay. was she was working in Chicago, and then there were some opportunities out here, and it Got just it. all worked out, and then yeah. we just stayed together. She keep you grounded. Um. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Did there's you, a lot yeah. that I learned from her. Like, you know, I didn't know that you can't wipe your mouth with the tablecloth at the, the <laughs> dinner table. <laughs> Perfect. Put your pants on. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I didn't know it's not proper to yell at somebody you don't know. Right, <laughs> right exactly. Until, Until and it's time. <laughs> Does she give you shit or is she more like, <clears throat> Brad, stop? No, she, you know, I think everybody has blind spots. Yeah. And I think for, for a guy like me that has just been on his own forever since I was young, mm -hmm. always dependent on myself, I always didn't second guess instinct. Yeah. You know? Did you ever want to get married? Uh, yeah, I just didn't think I would. You didn't think you would? Yeah, I just didn't think I would. Man. So why 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 did you decide to to get married? It was, uh, I just five years ago. I, I just I mean, it just you know. It worked. It just worked. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I felt the same way. I didn't think I was gonna get married when I, because my wife and I, I remember we were sitting together and I was and I we had the conversation. I think I told this before in the show. I'm not sure, but uh, she had said. I said, I don't really think marriage is, you know, on paper. It's just kind of on paper. You can stay with somebody and be fine. She's like, well, then you may need to make that decision because um, that's something I do believe in. And I have to like, reevaluate. Do I want to lose this woman with this belief or mm -hmm. do I want to try to give it a shot? Well, I think, guys, a lot of us, we, we're always not putting it off, putting off things to tomorrow. Yeah. But, you know, there were things that I would do, like, you know, and I'm sure if there's people out there that can relate to this, like, I wouldn't go, I know I never would leave the house with flip-flops on. 
Okay. Like in case something happened. I don't wear jewelry. Okay. You know, I don't want to lose it or get tried or have somebody trying, you know. Mm -hmm. There's there's certain ways that you grow up that like, you know, if, if you're around people a lot where there's always something could pop off, you know yeah. what I mean? And again, man, it's funny because I, I don't want to sound like I grew up in like fucking Compton. You'd be finding yourself in trouble. But yeah, you, yeah, we were always around guys that were that, you know, were quick with their hands. I you mean, ever get shot at? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. So yeah, so of course you're you gonna be hiding your story. fucking yeah. You're gonna be hiring your fucking you're gonna be hiding your jewelry. But uh but yeah, I've been robbed. Yeah. But um jumped. That was a big thing. Getting yeah. jumped. Jumped back in the day, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, starter worse. jackets. When you, get, when, you get, when you get caught by yourself. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit, and everybody's surrounding you. you Dude's know, pointing yeah. at you. It's like right. why why are you pointing? <laughs> right. Like Yo, that's him. Right there. Ding, ding, ding. Right. <laughs> and you try and swing and run, and you just get fucking rocked. Right. right. Um, but yeah, I would go out, and I would be uneasy with stuff, you mm -hmm. know. Like, and, and then my wife was just teaching me just to relax, you know, just chill, you know. You, you, you know, it was things like that I was learning. Yeah. Learning and, from her, and she helped. I mean, she. Well, then one day uh, we were out one night, and and I just spotted the whole perimeter. I just saw that they were setting up. There was this dude standing there. It's almost you like and your you wife were out. Yeah. Okay. And you know, and it's the one time where I was like, you know, I, I just, I, I, oh, my head's always on a swivel. Are you like that when you're out? Is yeah. your head always on a swivel? That might just be a guy thing. I think it's. It used to be. Now I'm just too tired with two kids, so I, nah, I just yeah. fall asleep. But if I'm you guys go out, like, I, 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 like she'll talk, and I'll be like, uh huh. But right. I'm, I'm like, all right, who the fuck's that guy? Right. Right. You know. So what happened to this? Oh, the dude, dude comes around. Yeah. I grabbed her. And I just said, and I took her right by the exit, and the dude came up, and boom, snapped the other dude. They started hitting him, you know, and just oh, you fucking saw, this dude. And I just saw it you coming saw to play. Come like, I place. saw this guy. I'm right, like, what's right, he right. doing? And we were dancing. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't, you, you weren't involved in it. You were just protecting no, her. No, just protecting her. her from the blast. Yeah, I see. Yeah, you I know see, what I mean? Yeah, I see what you're and saying. Then, and then, then, then I told her, I right. said, that's why. You could smell that stuff coming to my Which, I'm like, that's why you gotta, you can't fucking slack off. And then right. that set me back another fucking year or two. What, what from time? relaxing, I was starting to relax oh, when I went out. Oh, and, oh, right now, but now then, I'm cool, man. Okay, now, so, now I'm now I'm calmer. Right. I think once the tea dry, Orny Adams was doing a joke last night. At the improv, it's so funny. He's yeah. like, "Low T is the greatest thing that ever happened for a man." Right. Low T, he's going like the guy cuts me off. Low T, me, right. it's like, hey, no problem. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, and that so you say that sets you back for a full a full year. Yeah, because like I was I was starting to get calm, and right. that shit happened, and then right. you know. Okay. I mean, well, you're protective, also. You're Whatever. Saying, we we should just talked about Cobra Kai. No, dude. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I don't know why I brought. Honest, I brought that up. I before. thought that that, but I think that goes back to what you're saying before. In my too. home, it's protected. Where my <laughs> wife <protected>. sleeps <laughs> and my children <laughs> play with their toys. Uh, I don't understand, Michael. Yeah, but it's prote it's protection. It's 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 protecting of your mom. It's protecting of your brothers. It's protecting of your wife. It's protecting of all that stuff. You know, I don't your mind for business, but this is a street thing. I say we hit the Rosado Brothers while we got the muscle. So your favorite movie of all time? Oh, Rocky's number one. Rocky's number one. Then Rocky's the greatest movie. Yeah. 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 You put you put Rocky as. Did you like? Are you? Did you like Creed? You looking forward to Creed too? I like Creed. I thought it was great. Yeah. I'm not excited about it. I could give a rat's ass about the Star Wars anymore. Right. I'd be so disappointed. You just done it. with all. There's nobody else I want to see. Yeah. What Harrison about? Ford's dead. Luke's dead. You're old school. You don't like the new school. No, stuff. man. Yeah. It's just like it, none of it's. It's just not inspiring. Yeah. Rogue One was dope. You like you like more of the but you're more of the Oscar movie type guy to where like when I say that I mean like the the movies that kind of come out th from September to like December, which are, are, to be honest are my my favorite season also. It's like the more in depth movies, characters, performances, and stuff too. You're not like the big blockbuster guy. You like watching them, but but more. I, I like all the all the comic book movies. You do. Yeah, if it's on a lunchbox, I'm there. You're good. Um, I'm not a fan of like <clears throat> those those action movies. Which ones? Like just in, like the. Like I mean, I love The Rock, but the yeah. one with the fucking building. Oh, skyscraper! I heard it was pretty good though. Really? I heard it was good. I didn't see it yet. I now it. see, those are the ones that I'll watch on a plane and like. Right. It's not the one I'll run out to go buy a ticket for. Okay, that makes sense. Um, uh, I will run out to see any of the any any superhero movie. But you bring it, Rocky's your favorite movie of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so then it's got to be pretty fucking special that the director of Rocky, John Avildsen, yes, does Karate Kid. And yeah. You're a big cry. I know you're a big cry. Yeah, kid I love fan. it. You're a huge I fan. remember <clears throat> because I, I I had that with my mom and him. Yeah. My mom was that, you know, yeah, not yeah, high yeah, boys. Yeah. He was right. that type of, yeah. this innocent lady that's throwing around shit. Right. You know. Has to move. Bro. Oh, yeah. Bring hey, hey hi, right. Miss LaRusso. Nice car. Hi. Right. Are those your friends? That's how my mom would be. It's, well, then it's that's, oblivious to everything. Dude, that's cr even crazier now. Even after hearing the story, um, you growing up, and then how much Karate Kid must have meant to you seeing it as a kid. Yeah. And then look at, so let's, let's, let's rewind for a second, because I wanted to know 
how it all came to be, like knowing that this comes out. Because again, being a Karate Kid fan, when you read this, do you go, what the hell are they doing? Well, that's the thing with having ADD is sometimes you just don't pay attention. Yeah. And you know, I was very hyper as a kid. Dude, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Did you get what the was the question? I don't know. The audition. Oh, Tell me about oh, the audition. Oh. Tell me about the oh, role. I'm sorry. I don't know what, when it comes when it, when it comes in and you get the audition. Do you see, you see this and go? I'm not. Gonna I, you know what, man? I I, I, I honestly, I, I I was flying out. I was doing a gig and yeah. then I got in. And I went from. I was actually in Asbury Park, okay. which I think helped because you know if you hear me talk, I, I you can hear. I, I, and by the way, I looked this up. A South Florida accent is like a, a New York, New Jersey. Most it's like a diluted one. There, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then growing up up there, I do have a cadence and a lazy way of speaking like people do in the Northeast. Yeah. But I don't go dog, cat, you right. know, where, yeah, we was in Manhattan. Right. You know, I don't talk. Like, if, if you hear me talk, if you go there, you hear the accent. Right. Because people think I have an accent, but I really don't. Right, not not the way, not if you really not go if you're back. there. I mean, it's you like go this, hang out on Long Island for a, little, for like yeah. a week. You'll know what an accent. So when I was in Asbury Park, and then I got the call, I came from Asbury Park. I'm literally wearing my JR's Bar and Grill and Seaside Heights Maruka's Pizza T-shirt. Awesome. I go into the audition. I I had the sides, but I just you know I just was playing it. I mean I don't I don't like when when I when I go in on auditions and stuff. I just try and keep it down a little, like yeah. lower, listen a lot. <clears throat> I didn't over. I didn't want to overdo it, which I wouldn't have. Which you know, you always see all the time when people do that cartoony fucking mm -hmm. northeast thing. It's so annoying. Oh yeah, and you can spot it. It's, it's like when people try and do the Boston with the car. Right, the bar. It's right. like, all right, relax. Yeah, you can you can spot it a it's mile so away. It drives, me, it drives me bananas. Yeah, I didn't want to do this cartoon version. Right. Hey, yo, how you doing? Right, 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 right. So, um, so when I went in, I just read it pretty much normal, but I think it 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 sold it a little more because I just came from New Jersey. Yeah, if that makes any yeah. sense. And then, um. I left and I felt I did great. Yeah, who's in the room? So it's casting director. Just the casting director. Yeah, they put me on tape. Okay, so you go and you it felt great. Obviously, it did you get a call back pretty quick? Uh, I think I got an uh, uh, no, I got an offer. You got an offer after yeah. the first after the audition. Well, I th I don't know. You know, I, I didn't talk to them. Then I, I, I talked to them on the podcast about this, but I don't know if I was recommended or if somebody there was like we should bring him in. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. I but think, um, yeah, I think that he talked about it when they were on. The show, they think because you had kind of knocked it out of the park, they kind of and made made the role a little beefier too. Because originally it was just, I think you were just they were just working there, and then they made him Louis Larusso, right? Isn't that yeah, there was like another him? guy, and then they they combined them, and they, then they made Louis. There, okay. there was Louis was there, but then there was another guy that got into trouble, and then they were like, wait, maybe it was just consolidate. That's what it was. Too. That's what they said. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and then so you get the role, you get there on the first day. I says, yeah, sure, yeah, why not? Do you geek out a little bit? Got my own family, Senator. Huh? <laughs> Do you geek out a little bit? Of course. Right. Dude, that the scene when when Billy and uh, and Ralph or they meet. Yeah. I couldn't believe it, man. Yeah. I'm just standing there. I remember looking at Dana Hoot. And I'm, and we're we're looking at each other, and I'm like, "Fucking, it's them." Yeah. <laughs> you're the guy. Right. And you're his cousin. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was awesome. like we came in, we rehearsed, but just to rehearse yeah. and see everything, and you know. I kind of marked out a little. Yeah, sure. How did uh, how and then then they actually just do the scene when he calls me over, hey Louie, and yeah. then, then he's like, look, and then that was like the first thing we shot. Yeah. Do you get do you get along with Ralph pretty well? Yeah, dude, he's yeah. great. You met him. Yeah, I met him at the at the cocktail party the thing the other night, and it was like, and it was. God, man, he's like, such he's such a I, I, again, man. I, I said this before. I, I love how how like if we were sitting, if I was sitting here with with other comedians like a, like with Burr and Sebastian uh -huh. and we're sitting there talking and, and or whoever, Rogan, yeah. um, Joe Diaz, you, you just hear the passion and the experience and the love for the art. Right. That you just you just respect that. It's the same thing with him with acting. Like he's he's real he's such a trained actor and he did theater and he just knows all the directors and he knows both sides of the camera. And I and it's so funny because I keep forgetting that we work together in Beer League. Oh, right, 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 right. But that right, one right. scene, that right. was like one scene. And, and I was up, I read for his part. Yeah. But they, I think they had an offer to him. Okay. Did a lot of people don't know this. What, what happens sometimes is, is that people will bring you in and you audition, but they already have offers out. So you become like the backup plan if right. the offers don't go through. Right. Right? So I think they offered him already. And then there was an offer to the bad guy. So the director of Beer Lead and Artie brought me in and I read for like three or four different roles. And then 
all of them were already, all the offers were accepted. Right. So then they just, me and, I think Jim Florentine plays the, a catcher and they made me a third baseman, but I get in a fight with Artie. Okay. And then Ralph breaks it up, you know? It's like a quick thing. Right. And you and forgot about that. I forgot. Well, I yeah. mean, I remembered. Right. I remembered, but I forgot that we had worked together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Did he remember? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. But I think he looked it up. I don't know. He just okay. goes, he goes, I know we did beer league. I guess I remember. And then he, you know, we, we discussed it. But, um, but to sit and talk with him, just the experience, just, you know, to work with Avildsen, John fucking, work with Coppola. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The Outsiders is another one of my favorite movies. Absolutely. It's a great movie. And then yeah. my cousin Vinny. Yeah. Crossroads is dope. Yeah, I like it. Crossroads is underrated. Remember, she, remember she, the, the teachers? Do remember teachers? Yeah. Wow. And yeah. then the up was it up the academy he was yeah. in? He played. He was also in this movie. There was like a TV movie, but he played. It was a true story about this kid. The kid that had like that aging disease. I oh really? Yeah. It was a long. It was like right. And I remember Benjamin Button. He was no, Benjamin. It, it was the opposite. Yo, he was Benny yeah. Button. It was Benny B. You know, the fucking guy. <laughs> this fucking uh, guy. He looks great. <laughs> that's how you do the audition. Hey, Ben, get over here. <laughs> hey, listen, how old are you, right? This fucking guy. Look at him. Yeah, you got some fucking... This guy's fucking 92 years guy. old. Look at this guy. Got, Full head of hair. You got great balls fucking hair. Look at this fucking <laughs> this guy. This guy's fucking got abs at 90. <laughs> Believe this shit? <laughs> this guy's fucking tremendous. Look at this guy. Yeah, fucking, let's go get a fucking slice. I tell you about Manny. This <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, you're not going to believe it. Guess his age. Guess his age. How old is it? I'm saying, what would it say? 61. 61? What are you fucking... He's two. <laughs> that fucking guy's two. Two fucking years old. You believe that Man, shit? This motherfucker is <laughs> falling apart. He's like the fat fuck on Mork and Mindy. <laughs> but uh, remember Mork's son aged backwards? Yeah, yeah. It was, right, it was, it was Jonathan Winters. Jonathan Winters. Um, but uh, so, and what about fuck out of here? <laughs> what, yeah. about, what about Zapka? Dude, he's fucking great too, yeah, man. You guys had a great scene there. Dude, he's that, fucking strong. Yeah, he's strong. And by the way, he's he's like a real black belt. Like he did all this kick. Yeah, yeah, he's kicking the fuck up here. Yeah, it it was great. It, it, that whole that whole thing. I mean, you got to do what's crazy is you know watching gonna, Ralph on yeah. Fallon, and 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 um, and he looks just as just as young as Fallon. It's crazy. I know. You know, he's like fifty five or whatever he is. But um, do you? Uh, Fallon's you, a good dude, man. Did you know you know him pretty well? Uh, we did a gig in. Uh, in Nashville, I, uh, basically what happened was he... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no go ahead. Finish. No, no, finish your question. Then. Fallon, good guy? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... Hey, hey, you know, that Fallon, Jimmy F. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. You know, t talk with your fucking hands. Is he a nice guy or what? Well, I'll do this. I'll chop fucking broccoli while I'm talking. So the fucking guy. You do a gig? Which do you gig? You do one from that side? You end of this. If I ever did Fallon, this would be my couch story. Yeah. Um, it was one of the best weekends I had. So he was, he was, this is before his first show, okay. not the Tonight Show, the first one. Okay. And I'm not just saying this because we're all, he is hands down one of the nicest fucking dudes and one of the coolest dudes you could just kick it with. Like a legit guy. Just a fucking, he's just legit. That's it's good. just like hanging with a real dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and we say that, you know, I say that as yeah. a compliment because mm -hmm. there's a lot of bitch dudes out here. Bullshit like, people. Yeah, he's he's a real dude. Yeah. So, um, long story boring, I get a call from uh, uh, Zanies in, in Nashville, and it's Joel. Do you know? Did you yeah. ever do those? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Joel owns like all, all the improvs Jeez. and stuff yeah, yeah, in yeah. Fort Lauderdale. Uh -huh. So he calls me. He's like, "Hey, Brett, listen, uh, we had a fallout for Jimmy for the headliner. Uh, he goes, we, 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 I need you to headline this week. He goes, um, they recommend they want you to do this, and I, I don't even know what he's talking about, right? This is a great, this is kind of a good story. Yeah. You want to hear it? Yeah, please. Okay. So uh, it's a little long, but whatever. Go. So I said, Yeah, what's going on? I said, Well, look, <clears throat> we need you to headline this weekend, but I got to tell you, you, you Jimmy's going to middle, okay? But he doesn't want to advertise it. He's like, you know, because he's, he's just getting back. He was yeah. doing his, getting his legs, and he had the talk show come in, and, you know, he was on Saturday Night Live and doing movies and, so, you know, he's going to go, he wants to do like 2025, but there was like a list of people that, that, uh, that you know, we want you to do it. Just mm -hmm. you come in and headline and, you know, and I, I had already did the Wild West tour after that. Cause I remember that joke. And, um, so long story boring, they said, but don't advertise. Okay. Can't tell anybody. I show up on a Thursday. I just get in that day. I, I literally left. Uh, it was a Wednesday. I got the call. Mm -hmm. I show up on Thursday the place is fucking sold out. And I know it's not for me. Right. You know? Cameras are fucking everywhere. 
So I go to Brian. This is uh, uh, the guy that, uh, that owns it, um, Brian Dorfman. I go, I thought you didn't want anybody to know. He goes, no, they're not, they're not here for Jimmy. They don't know. CBS is doing a show called Hidden Talents of the Stars. Oh, shit. Right? And yeah. Clint Black, the country singer, is going to do 10 minutes of stand-up, and they're going to film it. So this audience, a lot of them were, were wrangled in, but they don't know what they're going to sing. Right. Okay? So they start the show. The MC goes up. Uh, it, poor guy. He couldn't even do, like, two minutes. They just said, bring fucking him right up, you know? Yeah. He's like, hey, how's everybody doing? Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to bring up your first comedian of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Clint Black. And everybody starts clapping, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. He has the same name. And this guy walked down on stage. Buddy. Play some bananas. Oh, yeah. You're in Nashville. Yeah, yeah. They fucking were screaming. <laughs> right. And he's like, hi, I'm Clint Black. You know how country singers like to say their first and last name? Uh -huh. And he did his set. And, you know, you could tell that somebody was writing jokes. He may have wrote the jokes, but he fucking nailed it. Because yeah. he's his natural performer. Ten minutes, what did you say? Ten minutes. Yeah. Read the jokes. People were fucking, women were crying. Right. I'm not even kidding you. <laughs> right, okay. There was this woman that was screaming, like, you know when they saw Elvis? Right, right. So he says goodnight, and people are freaking out. The guy runs out. He goes, everybody sit, sit back down. He's like, everybody sit back down. He's gone. He's got to go. He's not even going to be here, but you're going to be glad that you did. Ladies and gentlemen, from Saturday Night Live, Jimmy Fallon. And Jimmy comes out. These people are going, holy shit. Right. <laughs> That's the greatest fucking, you know. So then Jimmy does 20 minutes fucking strong. With the music and yeah. everything, strong. Yeah. And I'm in the back going, you know, what are you going to fucking bring up Willie Nelson now? And <laughs> fucking, <laughs> I'm going to fucking dig up Pryor? What, what, what do we want? He's like, well, we're going to bring up your, <laughs> your headliner. <laughs> Fourteen of you may have sung in a documentary. Right. I think there was one person in the audience that was like, right. yeah. They're like, Brett Ernst. So you just, because you can just imagine people, oh my God, who's coming out next? Right. And I just went out and, I was just like, you know, what's it? how'd it go? Oh, it, it went great. Well, I was just like, you know, how do you think? It's like, how do you think I feel? Right, right, you know? right, right, right. <laughs> right too. That's that's a that's awesome. Did you talk to Jim and you talked to Jimmy after? Oh, I hung out with him all weekend. That's man. fantastic. And I, well, I ran into him again at the comedy store. I got another funny funny story with yeah. him. I, I get a phone call. Um, I won't say his name, but a buddy of mine got out of jail. Okay, and um. But well, look, wait, for, we're getting back to Jimmy. So yeah. all weekend we went and played. We went to the hockey game, and then I had a friend of mine that came up, and he just he wouldn't let you pay for anything, you know. And then you know he's he's a paisan too, mm -hmm. you know, half I think, mm -hmm. I, Irish and Italian I think. But and we bonded over freestyle music, you know, like Expose, Trenier. He loves music, dude. Yeah. Like I mean, I, you know that by watching the show. Yeah. And um, just was fucking great, dude, man. Yeah. I mean, just across the board, That's just awesome. fucking. A, yeah. a, a pluses across the board. There was no jerk. There was not even a B minus in the jerk off department. Right. Like everything, just about the guy yeah. was strong. I, I remember I met him at the store once. I forget what it was for. Some big event. It might, you know what? Actually, that's I know exactly what it was for. Remember when Robin Williams when it was going in the main? Yeah, room when he did the for the roof. I re he, that's the same night. Yes, yeah, I remember that night. That was the night, and then he and he, he didn't use the mic in the in the main room. Remember he he, yeah. he and he left all those water bottles all over. Yeah. The place. <laughs> um, but yeah, that didn't was, you work there? So I was, I became a regular first. I was the only, I might be the only person to that, still ever Yeah, you, I, re I still remember this. I was a regular first and then and I became Then a you employee. got a job. Because I didn't have to do anything. Right. Because like the difference is when the employees, when they would go, they, they'd have to, you know, really, because you get canned and you can't become a regular. I was already a regular. So Dean, who was the manager of the store, he gave me, they said, change the awning. I go, I'm afraid of heights. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, fine, we'll get someone else to do it. I'm just, um, I would leave early to do that stuff too. Yeah, nobody gave a fuck then. No, I was only there to to get the, the they, employees to, yeah, to, to get around do all it. the other stuff, and I would get I would get more. I would be going up like three or four night, three or four times a night because I'd go belly room, I'd do OR, I'd do main room, and I and I'd be able to do all that stuff. But um, but anyway, wait, I want to tell you a story. Yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. Because uh, I got another story. Dude's at hear the from Fort you. Lauderdale Improv, right? Yeah. And um, I, I get a phone call. It's my friend, right? Mm -hmm. And he just got out of the camp. Yeah, he's yeah. been out maybe not even a year yet. Okay. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? And 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 I hear, hey, Ava. I go, hey. I go, yo. I, I can tell his voice. I go, yo. I go, who's this? He's like, Jimmy. I go, Jimmy who? It's Jimmy Fallon. I go, why the fuck you call me? Right? He goes, hey, you, you, your friend's uh, cornered me. <laughs> he was walking back to the hotel. 
My buddy's like, yo, you know prayers? <laughs> he goes, yeah. <laughs> and he fucking called them. He's like, here. Oh, yeah. So Jimmy's like, hey. And I'm like, put, put him on the phone. I go, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> right, right. What the fuck is wrong with you? Stopping Jimmy Fallon. On yeah, the like they cornered the guy. They had never met him before. No, I didn't even know him. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop him. You corner. know, Brett Ernst. Yeah, hey, come here. <laughs> right. now, now call my, call I had my no, wife. I had another friend of mine do that with uh, Chris Rock. He, he oh, was yeah. a cop, and, yeah. and he pulled him over. He said, you know Ernst? Hey, he goes, you know, you know Brett Ernst? And Chris is like, I don't, no, I don't. And he goes, he goes, well, you should. And he goes, why would I know? He goes, he's a comic. And he goes, he was in Vince Vaughn thing. And he goes, oh. He goes, <laughs> I told Tony the story. He yeah, died laughing. Yeah. He goes, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I know him. You know, you could tell it. He goes, well, he's the reason why you're not getting a ticket. <laughs> right? <laughs> and he drove, he drove away. And he called him. He's like, yo, I think I, <laughs> he goes, yo, I, think I hooked you up. <laughs> <laughs> I hooked you up. Yeah. Did you ever, and you talked to Tony about it, but not, not, you never seen, you ever talked to Chris about it? No, I haven't seen, well, every time I, I've only, you know, we, I just, you know, back in the, in yeah. the thing, I'm better, better friends with Tony. Right. Okay. Um, jumping back to the Vince Vaughn thing, because this plays into the, the other story I wanted to ask you about. Uh, the Vince Vaughn comedy tour was really, that was a big Well, you don't want to talk about depression and fucking uh, ADD. We, and, did, we did that already. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, we can, you can talk about how you got depressed during the, the during the, the Wild Wild West tour. Did you get, did you ever, did, was that a fun time? Was it depressing? Come on, are you fucking it high? It's one of the best times of my life. Awesome. So, I mean. Travel was, with four of my best friends and, and you know. Yeah. I mean, you? I was, I was close. I was friends with Vince before that. Right. I mean, you, you know what I mean? Vince Vaughn starts this thing. I mean, this is 2003. When no, it's 2006. Really? We did. We shot the movie. It came out in 08. Okay. Well, you would know better than me. Um, so that movie, it was you. you well, that makes sense because I didn't meet Cap until until after that. So it was you. Oh, yeah, trust me. Cap, Sebastian. Yeah. Uh, Ahmed Ahmed. It was it, it was Ahmed Ahmed. Yeah, Sebastian Mascalco, Caparulo, me. Then it was uh, Vince Vaughn, obviously. Right. Then Justin Long. We do it. Favreau would would do little yeah, cameos. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kier O'Donnell, Dwight Yoakam okay. was another one that would do sketches. It was, it was, dude, it was fucking. It was one of the best times of my life. It was great. And how many yeah. tour, how many uh, cities was it? Thirty cities. We hit thirty cities in a row. And the best part was we were sponsored by EA Sports okay. and and Budweiser. Wow. So we would just drink beer and play fucking uh, 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 FIFA soccer, and, and we had a, Madden. We yeah. were playing Madden all the time. That had to be outrageous. Dude, we had fucking. It was like you know, people were like it must have been hard living on a uh, on a bus. With five people, I'm like, it's not a bus, dude. The personalities are so different on that tour. Well, I was fine. I know. I can tell you. You and Ahmed must have hung out a lot. Well, right? me and Sebastian hung out. Sebastian, right, we you all and Sebastian hung out. But Sebastian's my, uh, my my best friend. Right, right. Because so, I, but we, but it was uh, we all hung out really. Yeah. But like Cap was always, you know, I don't feel like doing this. Like, he was to himself because yeah. that's Cap. Yeah. Ahmed was. Uh, it was me. You know, the three. Oh, and. Uh, um, Ari Sandel, the director, we okay. would hang it with him. And Vince, we, we all hung out, man. Yeah. There was no like best friend shit. No, but you know, but it's still, you still, anytime you go on tour with somebody too, there's always, like you said, you and Sebastian. Here we go. Here we go. You're going to proje project your. Am your, I wrong? Your, your, your you, tendency. You just like to argue. You're, no. You love it. Are you in the, the <laughs> fucking debate team? We'll do 10 minutes and, yeah, the, and, then, and then come back were to you. Were you on the debate team? Yeah, I was. Of course you were. Don't worry about where I was. Don't embarrass yourself. Fucking me and me and the Benny B. Me and Benny. So, but anyway, so you, you, <laughs> you and Sebastian are. Or, well, why do you? Why are you guys so tight? That's curious. Too. We kind of just came up together, man. Yeah. We, you know, we just used to hang out. We had a lot of common. But get what? What, what are you going to say about well, the? Because well, same thing. You guys see you and Sebastian. So talking too. about the tour, man. The tour. Oh, so um, but we were all friends. Like I knew Vince from Dublin, so we were going out before then. And okay. then we did a, we did a show in Dewey Beach, Delaware, mm -hmm. in like '04. So maybe that's what you were thinking about. Probably. Yeah. For the troops and for their families. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's what you were thinking about. Yep. And yep. then we did that once. We did that once, and then Vince came up with the idea of, of doing this big tour and filming the whole thing as a documentary. Okay. And um, and then that's what we did, and it was it was like the best fucking. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. Is that when? Uh, so all my best friends. They were all my friends. I remember a story about a shirt. With that was in San Diego. Right. Okay. It was. It wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. But we got. Let's take a break from the Wild West and you got to tell the story. It's one of my favorite stories. Well, what? How do you know this? Uh, did we tell you this? I think so. Yeah. You and I think when I was, it might have been when we did Saboba. Okay. When we did Saboba with Sebastian. So Sebastian, and we talked. This was yeah. This was like it was me, Sebastian, um, Luca Palanca. Yeah. And Wheels, I think, or Mike Ricca. 
Mitch used to put those theme yeah, songs. I love the story. <laughs> I love this story. I can't believe you're telling, making me tell you the story. You have to tell the story. This is a very funny story. How do you remember that? That's because I remember it. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so um, my buddy Sebastian used to wear like these club shirts, right? They were like loud. Remember when he was doing those with the seven of diamond yeah. jeans yeah, and yeah. shit? And uh, but it was like these cl- these weird club shirts. That, like I think he had a leather shirt one time, right? It was just like I'm like, dude, <laughs> um, like real fucking Guido <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he would wear them on stage, and it was just like this orange Nerf. I don't, I forgot what the fuck he was wearing. So we go, we, we go into this bar afterwards, and as soon as we walk in, these guys, they're like these fucking uh, like frat dudes, whatever. They're, they're pointing over at us and they're laughing, right? And and I'm like, I go, Spag, are they fucking laughing at us? And he, he's like, you know, I think so. I don't, you know. So, of course, he's not as confrontational. So right. I walk over to the table, and I go, yo, what the fuck? I go, something funny to you? I go, you got a problem with my friend's shirt? And they go, what are you talking about? There was a table behind us. They were, like, calling out to him? Yeah, well, they were behind us, and they were going. And then I felt like a dick. Yeah. So I go, let me buy you guys drinks. I'm so sorry. And I just was apologizing. And as we're walking away, Sebastian goes, what the fuck's wrong with my shirt? <laughs> Dude, it's the worst shirt I've ever seen in my life. You told him that right after. Yeah, it was awful. Does he still have the shirt? I don't know. I mean. <laughs> but the fact that that was like the first instinct. Oh, it's my like, favorite. yo, you got a problem with my friend's shirt? I, love I just could imagine because you know, right. Seb, he, he, he was quiet. And yeah. <laughs> he's like, what's wrong with my shirt? What's wrong with my shirt? Oh, God. Sebastian kills me, man. So he's fun. the funniest he's dude the funniest on the planet, dude, man. And you just got, naturally, all yeah. the way around, just everything from yeah. head to toe, mannerisms to etiquette to everything. The guy's his own thing. Yeah, I mean, he's he's really. I mean, shit. I remember when he was coming up at the store in general, and then just watching him kind of blow up. I mean, it's cool to watch all the people that we kind of came up with and, and seeing everybody kind of doing their thing. It's, well, look, it's, if, it's inevitable. And anything that you do, if you put the time in and you get good at it and you yeah. work hard at it, you'll, you'll see something from it. It's the truth. Um, so what's going on before we get out of here? What's, what's, you have a podcast as well? It's called You're on the List. Okay. We list things. Uh, mostly, though, I would love people to check out my special that I released for free. Okay. Which was by choice. Where they find it? At brettcomedy.com. Okay. Brett with one day. Okay. And I tell people this. Because, you know, they're like, why would you do that for free? Yeah. And it's my it, next question. Well, we, we were... We, <laughs> <laughs> we were... Uh, well, I, was, I started shopping it. It was getting some Mickey Mouse offers. Yeah. I think one company's not even around anymore. Okay. Getting notes back on it. And, and it's kind of like a personal one-man show type thing. So I explained to somebody. I said, years and years ago, right? This is why... This is just because I'm fucking nuts, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, I remember the trucker hats were in. Oh, yeah. With the mesh Ashton and shit. Kutcher was, was Yeah, all was that shit, that yeah, Von yeah. Dutch shit, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I found a box of trucker hats, right? <laughs> and about 30 of them. Right. So I was with my girlfriend at the time. We had a yard sale because we were getting rid of everything. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get rid of these hats. They were like generic mm-hmm. trucker hats, you know? It's a fucking waste. But they still had the tags on it. They were brand new. So it's a fucking dollar a piece, right? So this woman comes up to me and says, uh, Picks the hat up. She's looking at it. She's like, I'll give you a quarter for it. I'm like, no. It's a dollar. Right. What the fuck am I going to do with a quarter? Right. It's a dollar. She's like, 50 cents. I go, I don't think you understand. It's a dollar. <laughs> That's it. Do you think pay a dollar? Just it's put it down. Or I'm right. throw, you know. This other guy comes over and he starts lecturing me on like the like, etiquettes of a yard sale. Uh, right? And I'm just getting so angry as he's sitting there. He's talking down to me. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, and I'm picking the hats up, and I'm just fucking ripping them in front of them, right? Because <laughs> I'd rather fucking throw them the fuck away than give it to them for a quarter. Right. And that's why I gave the special for free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's free. They can get it on uh, your website, and then is it linked in your... In BrettComedy.com, and if you like yeah. podcasts, it's called You're on the List. What we do is we list things. Who do you host to it? Uh, PG Ovine. Oh, cool. Bigharandteeth.com. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, we just, I think we're doing pretty well, man. We Good. just jumped up on Stitcher. We're not, we're not where you guys are yet. Um, Brett Ernst, at top, Brett Ernst. Top five movies. Of all time? Yeah. 
You could rattle them off. You've had this conversation. I can, you no, know, I mean, because it, it switches up. I, I'll tell you some of the ones that I that I put in consideration. I okay. Rocky in there for sure. Godfather would be in there. Uh, I, let's rephrase that. Braveheart. Your, your top four movies, because Rocky's number one. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. You put that in your top five? Empire Strikes Back? Fuck yeah. Of Earth all Earth time? Earth. Yeah. It, it, really? It, the, the, the second, the, well, the fifth one, but the second one that ever came out. Irving it's Kirk, the second. Yeah, yeah right. Um, yeah, absolutely, 100%. What well, Luke made out with his sister. Yeah. Um, Wolf of Wall Street is in my top ten. Dude, that's a great movie, man. Um, when, he, when he comes in with his, with his root every, out every, <laughs> at the party. Yo, with Jonah Hill. Um, but uh, Goodfellas yeah, is up course. there. Yeah, of course. I can, though, I can shut it off once the helicopter comes. You know, really? Yeah. Uh, like Do you know that whole scene is, is, is basing around that gravy, him stirring the yeah. fucking sauce? Yeah. He's obsessed with the sauce. Yeah. It's just all coked out of his But it's court. also an Italian thing. <laughs> Make yeah, sure right. you fucking stir right. it. Right. The kids sit there yep. so he doesn't fuck the gravy up. Oh, my wife made me the greatest sauce for Father's Day. It was amazing. It was really? really it took my she took my mother's recipe. And uh yeah, dude. It was it was like legit. Take the like Come the, here, son. The chunk, yeah, the chunk of the, the, the whole fucking bread with some butter on it, just it's fattening fucking it great. up. Oh, it's delicious. Um, listen, man, we got to do this again. You got to come back in for sure. We'll do we'll do like a more full on movie discussion. Why well, you don't want to s- spend forty minutes on depression? fucking depression? I want to. I wanted to. I mean, that's the thing. People want to learn. We can talk about comedy all day long. How many times do you fucking talk about comedy and and stand up? You talk about it all the time. Yeah, right? every, and I'm I'm You're done. done with I'm it. done with the. You can't say anything anymore. Argument. Yeah. So you say whatever you want. You say whatever the fuck you want. But look, it's it's awesome hanging out again. You know I love you. We're gonna do it again. Oh, for sorry. Sure. Always, always with the right. We we'll do this one. Here we is that we ended it out. Brett Ernst. Make sure you check him out. Check out his special. Check out his podcast. At check, Brett Comedy with one T. That's right. And and Cobra Kai. We're gonna get you season two. Season two Louis, coming up. Louis coming back. And guys, thank you. Make sure, obviously, that you do the whole thing. With if you're on YouTube, leave a comment, do the like. But if it's on podcast, if it's Apple Podcast, subscribe, rate, do all that. And the same thing with Podcast One. Leave some comments. You know the drill. That was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it, subscribe it, do all that stuff. Hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows. And we will continue to make more of them. You can find all your favorite shows from Collider on iTunes on the Collider Podcast Network. Thank you very much. See you next time.